Hey, what's up, YouTube? Welcome back to another episode here on the Juice British Garage. So, today's video got a little bit messed up when I was recording it. Uh, some of the audio got kind of messed up. I left the mic off on certain scenes and things like that. So, I figured I'd just do a voiceover for you guys. Um, I'm not good at voiceover, so we'll see how this comes out. And my house is not always uh, quiet, guys. So, just be mindful. And... Uh, Hope you guys enjoy. Welcome back to another episode here on the Juice Butters Garage. Alright guys, well we started here by draining the coolant from the bottom. As you guys can see, that coolant looks good guys. Still pretty vivid green. Looks pretty damn sharp to me. We moved on to pulling all the hoses out. If you guys remember, we used all nice uh, OEM GM replica hoses. Um, they fit real nice and they had that little GM stamp on them. All right, we're gonna go ahead and pull the radiator. At this point, I had already pulled the transmission lines, so this thing was ready to come off. And on the previous episode, we had cut the electrical fan harness off. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and move on to the power steering. Uh, we utilized a CPT gearbox for the 70 Chevelle, which really did increase the, just the overall steering feel of the car and the, the response of the car. Uh, that C50 gearbox is nice, guys. Highly recommend it over the old Stalker um, game changer. Um, I, we utilize on this build uh, all OEM style molded hoses. That's why everything fits real nice. Um, when we do our LS swap, we'll see what we figure out because uh, nothing's gonna be as plug and play as it is here, right? Um, I am thinking about going with that new um, hydro booster so we may need to tee off um, from the power steering to feed our brake system so yeah all right guys well moving on to the removal of the exhaust system it's a kind of a shame that I'm having to remove this uh, long tube header system because I did spend a lot of time and effort and money into it as you guys see uh, I welded the flanges and uh, on both the header and the uh, the X pipe, so yeah, that sucks. And here we have the removal of the transmission now. I'm going ahead and pull the bolts now, um, just because it's going to be easier than having the jack under it while I do it. So why not just do it now before the jack goes in? And there goes the jack. Um, I just use a flat piece of wood. I know some of you. Uh, real hardcore techs are cringy right now but this is the only way I know how to do it guys one piece of piece of block and there goes the transmission mount bada -beam, bada -boom. okay so now let's pull this drive shaft out everything was pretty smooth um, we previously handled all these bolts so nothing was like like seized on there or anything like that so it was pretty much easy drive shaft uh, unbolted and slid right out you guys can see here on this little clip right here. There it goes. Bada bing, bada boom, once again. All right guys, let's not forget to pull the oxygen sensor. Um, the Holly Sniper EFI requires one um, to be able to do all the adjustments on the air and fuel ratio. So our headers, we went ahead and welded the bung, but, uh, but yeah, let's pull that bad boy out. Uh, next, we're gonna go ahead and remove all the linkage because as you guys know, um, all this linkage connects to the shifter. So we don't wanna leave any of this stuff connected because we're gonna make a mess when we pull this transmission off, right? We're gonna make cause some damage. So all this stuff needs to be unhooked. So let's go ahead and put our bolt back where we took it out from so we don't lose it. And yeah. Okay guys, and we also have a couple more things to pull from here. One of those things being the speedometer um, cable this is the one that sends uh, the information to the speedometer gauge so we're going to go ahead and screw this here and pull it out and one more electrical plug right. and the baby has lost patience all right guys so let's move on to pulling the torque converter bolts um i find it easy just to get a long extension and a socket with my impact um, this is the way I've always done it. I think it's just like cake. You just hit it real quick, bada bing, bada boom, and it comes right off. 
uh, versus getting some knuckle busters and you know I don't know I just find it to be the easiest way so there it is guys and to remove the bolts that connect the engine and the transmission together I like to climb into the engine bay and get the bolts from the top of the bell housing from inside of the engine I find it to be the easiest as you guys can see here we have a nice little a good amount of space I could say to get those bolts um, versus getting up in the bottom with a bunch of swivels and extensions so uh, yep that's the way I do it guys and uh, the bottom I just get some extensions all right guys so now let's go ahead and pull those motor mounts out I just use an impact and hit it real quick um, Sometimes you do need to go ahead and lift the engine up a little bit, a tad bit, just so you can pull the bolts out. But for the most part, they usually just come right out. All right, so then the headers gave me a bit of, of trouble, so I ended up removing them while the engine was in the air, just to make it easier for me to, to get that engine out. All right, guys, well, the 402 is pulled out. It has uh, all the accessories, brand new water pump, brand new alternator. Um, I went the extra mile and got like perfect fitting so they could flow nice. See how my water pump's not all uh, crimped. Um, letting them have all the hoses, transmission line hoses, uh, rebuilt TH400 by uh, those dudes that uh, I had to jump through hoops to get it warrantied. Um, b and Torque Master Converter, uh, Lacor, I think it's called, um, dipstick, hooker headers, brand new motor mounts, uh, deep uh, oil transpan, uh, SFI approved flywheel with ARP bolts, Holly Hyper Spark Distributor, uh, see Holly Sniper, um, we and Intake Manifold, Comp Cams, it has a Roller rockers, it has guide plates, heavy duty push rods. Uh, it's a nice little motor. Uh, and well, there it is. But uh, yeah, guys, uh, like I said, uh, this engine, it did take me a lot of, uh, I guess you could say, a long nights. And uh, I feel good that it's gonna go to one of my friends. Um, he's gonna put it on this really, really cool car, guys. It's a uh, 1960s uh, Impala that was a, a hybrid build between two legendary builders, uh, Bill Hines and Bill Crushenberry. Um, and now it's going to be finished by, you know, Zandoval Zeke. So that's going to be a really cool car, and this motor is going to go on it. Um, so that's going to be pretty cool. Uh, but before I close out this video, I'm going to show you the car, and then we'll close it out. And then hopefully on the next episode, we'll do an interview um, and kind of show you guys Richard's cars and that car in more detail and stuff like that. Uh, cool guys, well, let's get to it. What do you need? Oh, you want to next car down? Yeah, we should. Yeah. 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 Look at that. That's what I said. Why is it all? It wouldn't matter.